Today, I'll be taking a look at the initial results obtained from the RSI and Stochastic RSI overbought oversold signals that we coded last time. Back after this brief message. DarwinX is a UK FCA regulated broker and asset manager on a mission to disrupt the financial trading, investing and asset management industries. If you're a talented trader looking to attract investor capital to your strategies, DarwinX is the fastest way for you to do this. We enable traders to raise third party investor capital and then charge success fees on high watermark profits. Additionally, DarwinX itself invests in its traders with our seed capital allocation program that allocates up to 90 million euros per year in successful trading strategies. So if all of that sounds interesting, learn more by clicking on the link here or you can find further links in the description right below. Now back to today's tutorial. This is the first chance that we've had to quantitatively compare the standard RSI indicator with the newer stochastic RSI. There's still plenty of work to do to produce the full strategy, but today I'll look at how the signals between the two indicators compare. This is the Spotlight on Indicator series. To access other episodes, including that one I mentioned on coding the strategy, you can find a link to the playlist in the video description. We're now well into the process and we've already completed the initial indicator research that you can see at the top of the circle here. We've identified our target strategy premises and initially we're going to be tackling the overbought oversold strategy. And the purpose of all of this, if you remember, is to compare the effectiveness of the stochastic RSI with the standard RSI indicator. And so now we find ourselves here at these two stages. The systematic analysis which will be performed predominantly via backtesting. So I mentioned in the introduction that this was an initial analysis. So we won't be completing the strategies today, but what we will do is perform a comparison of the raw overbought oversold signals. So at this stage, I won't be introducing any filters. I won't be introducing any other indicators at all. There won't be any time of day filtering and so on. So the charts that I present to you today are from nothing more than the RSI and stochastic RSI open and close signals. The signals that we discussed in the previous episodes. Now, because of that, it's extremely unlikely that any strategy will show a profit at this stage of the strategy development process. Usually, in order to get that profitable strategy, we need to think about matching the signals to specific market regimes. And we can do that by using, for example, volatility filters, trending or ranging filters, or identifying if the market is noisy or quiet. And each of these regimes will be matched to different types of signal. But because we're not doing any of this yet, that's the reason we're not likely to see a profitable strategy at this stage. But don't worry, in future episodes, I will be adding those market regime filters. And so hopefully there, the results will improve dramatically. So let me explain to you the conditions that I've used for this analysis. As I've said before, I'm not going to optimize any parameters. I'm keeping the default 14 periods for RSI and then 14 for the RSI component of stock RSI and 10 for the stochastic calculation. I'll be testing on 28 currency pairs simultaneously. In terms of position sizing, initially I'm just going to be using minimum lots. And it's always a good idea to do that, especially when you have a strategy that isn't performing well yet, because the last thing you want to do is to run out of money in the backtest account before the full test has completed. And so usually by keeping to minimum lots means that you can get that full picture. Now, I've split my 10 years worth of data into two segments. I've allocated five years for the in-sample period, 
And so this is where I'll change certain metrics in order to attempt to improve the strategy. But then at the end of that entire period, that's when I'll start to use the out of sample period, which will take us up to September of this year. And that out of sample data, of course, is used to validate the work that we've done on the in sample to ensure that we haven't overfitted and to make sure that the strategy works in a similar way on price data that it's never seen before. Now, in terms of where I've got my data from, I've downloaded M1 data for the entire 10 year period. And I personally use Tick Data Suite for that. And then I have done some cleansing on that to get rid of spurious data before undertaking the analysis that you'll see. Now, just a note here, the MetaTrader Strategy Tester allows you to choose the option to test using M1 data. However, if you don't have M1 data for the entire period, it won't give you an error. And instead, it will just start to use other timeframes when the M1 data runs out. Most brokers will only provide in the region of three to six months worth of M1 data. And so if you're relying on that data to perform your backtests, then maybe the most recent six months will be properly done using the M1 data. But then as you go back in time, the strategy tester will then start to use M5 data. After that's run out, it will start to use M15 data and so on. And so if you're hoping to get like for like results between backtesting and live trading, then you're not going to be able to do that with the vast majority of brokers data. So as I said, I choose to get my full 10 years worth of data from Tick Data Suite, load that into the MetaTrader 5 platform, and that helps to achieve that like for like behavior between backtest and live trading. And in terms of the processing interval, I'll be processing signals from both of the indicators every minute. And then if I were to go ahead and trade this strategy in a live account, I would use the same basis. I would still only process every minute, even though, of course, I would have full tick data being streamed in from the market. But I do that to get like for like behavior. And then in terms of the MQL code, this is what I covered in the previous episode, episode 27. And so take a look at that to get full information around the rules that I'll be using. Okay, so I'm going to start off with the stochastic RSI indicator. And I've initially set the overbought and oversold levels here to 80 and 20. So let's start off a backtest now. And we'll come back to this in a moment when that's completed. Okay, so that's now completed. And as we expected, this is still a loss making strategy. However, I do think that this shows some promise. There are periods of time where we can see equity increasing here. And this is certainly far better than many other signals that I've seen in the past at this stage of the strategy development process. Now, to enable us to compare effectively the RSI with the stock RSI, and also to see how the equity curve improves as we make changes to this strategy, I'll be using Excel charts to be able to do that. So this is that same chart that we saw a moment ago, and I can tell you that this produced just over 54,000 trades. Now, if you've seen previous episodes, you'll remember me saying that I thought that this strategy would produce a very high number of trades. And indeed it does. So this is good. So as we progress through the process, that high number of trades is going to help us because it will mean the results we achieve will have a higher level of statistical significance. Now, the first thing I tried after this was making the overbought and oversold levels a little bit more extreme. As we saw from the charts of stochastic RSI, very often the indicator gets close to zero and to 100. 
And so I tried changing these levels to 90 and 10. And this is the result. So the blue line here is the equity curve we saw a moment ago. And by doing nothing else other than making those levels slightly more extreme, instantly we now have a profitable strategy. This, to me, is really encouraging. Because, as I said, usually at this stage, before we've introduced any market regime filters, we very often struggle to get a profitable strategy. And clearly, this will reduce the number of trades because sometimes the level of the indicator won't reach those more extreme levels. But even so, we still have over 30,000 trades. And so I consider this an excellent starting point in this strategy development process to now go on and introduce those additional filters to further improve this equity curve. This whole exercise, of course, is about comparing RSI with stochastic RSI. So let's now take a look at the exact same process, but this time using the RSI indicator. So here, as I discussed previously, we need to use less aggressive thresholds for those oversold and overbought levels, because RSI rarely reaches very extreme levels. And so, as I said before, the starting point for RSI will be levels of 70 and 30. And using those, this is the equity chart we get. Now again, there are periods of time where we see the equity increasing. And so again, this gives us some level of hope that we can turn this into a profitable strategy. And I thought it would be a good idea to compare this equity curve to that that we got with the stochastic RSI initially using those 80-20 levels. And this is what we see. Broadly speaking, we can see some similarities here. When one of these goes up, the other often goes up, and vice versa for those equity falls. But by the end of the test, they end up pretty much in a similar place. And so, naturally, my thought process here was that if we can make the levels more extreme for stochastic RSI and see a big improvement there, then we might well see the same if we make the RSI levels more extreme. But we have an additional challenge with RSI. Whereas with stochastic RSI we had 54,000 trades, at this point with the standard RSI, we only have just over 8,000 trades. So in terms of statistical significance, this is going to cause us a lot more issues as we go through the strategy development process. Because the fewer trades we have, the less we should trust the results, because overfitting is much more likely to occur. But let's go through the process and see what happens. So looking just at RSI here, the red curve is the values that we had with 70 and 30. But this time, when we make those levels more aggressive, we don't see an improvement. And I actually think that the green equity curve here has got worse. Furthermore, we now go from just over 8,000 trades down to 1.6 thousand trades. And so this number of trades now starts to be a real concern for me. So not only did we see the results get worse, we're also in the realms now of having major problems as we move forward. So my view is that we have to stick with the levels of 70 and 30 in order to keep this higher number of trades. So let's do a comparison of where we've got to so far between stochastic RSI and the standard RSI. And so clearly we can see here the yellow curve, which was from stochastic RSI using levels of 90 and 10, is far superior to that of RSI, even though we have considerably more trades. As I said at the beginning of the episode, this is just the first stage of the strategy development process. We'll hopefully be able to get much improved equity curves as we go through the 
next steps in the process. But at this stage, I am in no doubt at all that it's stochastic RSI that is providing much more effective signals from an overbought, oversold perspective than the standard RSI. Now, this, of course, is not to say that RSI won't be better than stochastic RSI for some types of trading rules. But from a purely overbought, oversold perspective, stochastic RSI comes out in front. So where do we go from here? Well, in episode 29 onwards, I'll start to match these two indicators to different types of market regime and use filters in order to do that. And just like we have today, I'll be comparing those results to see which of the indicators proves to be more effective. But hopefully, we'll see an improvement in both of them. If you think you have any relevant information, hints or tips about the topic of any of my videos, then please remember to comment so that I and other viewers can all benefit from your insights. Also, if you're getting value from this video, then please remember to give me a thumbs up. Now, until next time, trade safe.